Hi. It's Maps with Trent. Today we're going to look at feedback. Making circles, making triangles, making things that end up where they began. As is necessary when you're doing feedback, you need to lose your mind a little bit because understanding things is a little difficult. Um, but I figured we'd start with this lovely patch here. It, it takes two cables, but it's really only one cable. Um, This is a Three Sisters Rhythm Patch. Um, it takes one cable, which you patch from the low output, to so the output of the low pass filter, into the all input. Um, we've set the quality to maximum, so we're oscillating as much as we can. But the trick here is, even if I turn quality down, it'll still feed back. It still has resonance. The resonance, uh, it, resonance is really just feedback. Uh, it's like fancy, it's a fancy word for feedback in a very specific case. Uh, in this case, we're not using it as resonance, we're just using it as kind of a feedback. Um, so this cable here, this little tiny blue cable, is providing the resonance, is providing the feedback. So currently, just to reiterate, we're going from the low output of three sisters, the low pass output, plugging it into the all input. So we're taking the low out and going to all. So what that's doing is that's creating a feedback loop from the low input to the low output. It's just that the low input kind of comes from this cable. The trick is that that's creating the feedback. Um, but what it's also doing is using that oscillation that's caused by the feedback to trigger both the high and center jacks, which are each resonant in their own way. So right now, you'll just hear it as a regular beat. Um, I currently, also to add to this patch, I have up here uh, this cold Mac, this one, um, just sending five volts out on this cable, just to get an offset voltage in here. And we're plugging into the FM which allows us to change the frequency of three sisters. And you'll note I have free frequency all the way down. And I've turned the FM knob a little bit counterclockwise. So that's pushing it down further uh, negative. Um, so this is like a little, this is a frequency below what's available on the panel. Um, as we turn quality up, we're adding resonance to the high and center channels which at some point brings in this like galloping rhythm. And what's gonna happen here, uh, we're in crossover mode, by the way. Um, that's important. It, it changes if you go to format and we'll get into that in a second, but um, When you turn span, you're not going to change the frequency of center, but you are going to change the frequency of both low and high. So it kind of changes the characteristic. Wow. So for people new to the game, these patches can be very sensitive. They are likely, they are able to and very likely to explode on you at, at points. Um, and sometimes the only way to get back is to go back to where you started and like, and kind of search from there. So I should patch in a volume control here because that will likely happen again a lot today. Maybe we should jump back and talk about what this is actually about today. Um, so recently, I've been uh, just playing around with 
these modules that I've designed and kind of exploring different ways to kind of get more out of them. So I can treat a Three Sisters as not just three filters or a mangrove as not just an oscillator, um, but rather finding ways to kind of make a filter which is meant to take sound away and instead turn it into uh, rhythm in this case, um, as well as like different sounds, sounds you're not expecting. Um, I think this is one of the, it's one of the best parts about analog is the way that you get to do feedback that's like incredibly difficult to model inside of a computer. Um, yeah, so really today's just about going through some patches and kind of exploring some, some of the more interesting uh, kind of possibilities here. Mangrove, we'll get to mangrove in a bit. Um, so I'm going to try this. Let's plug this back in and see what, see what we're hearing now. Wow. Sorry again. Let's get a volume control. <laughs> I think, uh, someone ate all of my patch cables. <laughs> Things are a little tight in here. I, I wish I had a better camera for this setup. So we have this, this oscillation. I'm a little confused as to where it's coming from. Louder for me. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I should turn it down. Some of these patches are very quiet as all. Well. I'm not really sure what's going on here. We had... We did have a great patch. That's up. This is down. This frequency should be inaudible, it should be so low. I really don't know what's going on here. This is not boding well for today, but we'll figure it out. A broken cable. I mean, that's true, that's possible. It's doing something when I plug it in. That has a lot of bass, I like that. Maybe this pot's broken. All right, let's try this again. One of the great things, well, one of my, my lucky situations is that I have multiples of these in case things go wrong. But, uh, again, this is still not quite right. Alas, oh, crossover. Let's move on. <laughs> There's a patch there. I'm sorry that it's a little difficult to, to find. Um, I only got this one yesterday, so there's 
There's a possibility that I got it wrong. Once I figure it out, I'll make sure to post it up somewhere. Um, all right, what's next? Another really cool like rhythm generator patch is using two mangroves, but I think you can do it with any two oscillators. Um, so, and this is kind of easier. I literally, I think I gave all my stack cables to one of my friends, so we're going to have to make some spaghetti, but hopefully you'll get the idea. Um, so at the moment, we have this mangrove sound. I'm going to turn it down here because I think it's way too loud on my own. Yeah, okay, that looks better. Um, so this patch, this patch is really simple. It's just taking the square wave out of one mangrove to modulate, uh, to modulate the, the pitch of this and then doing the exact same thing. So it's just a cross patch. Um, so exponential modulation in both directions. So as a as a starting point, um, as a starting point, I turn the frequencies both all the way counterclockwise. That's going to get us into like um, kind of low frequency kind of zones. Um, and the cool thing is on on this mangrove, we still have all the wave shaping possibilities. But on this mangrove, we only have frequency. It'll create this like pulsing sound, and it'll be at a frequency. Um, which I think if you can kind of tune between the two. You get these kind of chaotic patterns that kind of come through. Um, and so this one's really just about the idea of using, of just um, cross modulation across. Um, but we can also, we can kind of, mo you can like do a lot of different stuff with this patch. So this is just using square waves for each other, but we can also do the formant to get a, a lot more control. So here I'm just going to use the volume of the left oscillator to really kind of get into some different timbres, hopefully. I'm going to uh, take the formant out of this side as well, but I want to be able to listen to it too. So we're going to jump up to this, uh, this malt up here. So we can listen to it as well as use it as the feedback control. And this is, I think, where it gets really interesting. When you kind of... Uh, when you have wave shaping control over both sides of that uh, cross modulation, it gives you like a lot of freedom and flexibility to kind of change what those impulses are. It's very difficult to reason about. Um, so I think it's something where it's very much like intuition based, which is kind of delightfully different to thinking about code um, and the scripting that we've been doing. So. And one of the best things about Mangrove is, I think, when you turn frequency and fine and formant and barrel all the way counterclockwise, even without this feedback, it gives you like a pulse. It'll be different on every Mangrove. They run at different frequencies, slightly. Um, and then 
turning barrel. It gives a kind of uh, chaotic rhythm. But then introducing this, this frequency modulation adds a lot more variation into it. Sometimes it's a little too much variation. has a really interesting effect that like this particular the more modulation you apply the more high frequency you get So having the one you're listening to, if you turn the form and barrel all the way all the way counterclockwise, it gives you a lot more of a transient on those attack sounds. I think you can do a lot of cool stuff with this in terms of generating rhythm. Um, so at the moment, all we've been doing is using the exponential input, but we can also do uh, linear modulation. So, so really pitch and FM input, they're really the same thing. It's just that pitch is exponential and FM input is the linear version. Uh, and linear is cool because it allows um, things to track, so, so to say. Um, but it really just gives you a different characteristic when you're doing this kind of feedback stuff. And it's usually a little more subtle. Um, in the bass frequencies though, um, the linear effect is stronger. Um, so, because you can think of it, you're, you're, you're adding a fixed amount of Hertz. So if you're operating this, this, this mangrove at, you know, two to 10 Hertz, then any linear amount is gonna be significant. Um, not entirely sure what's going to happen. And one thing here, I mean, these sounds can be a little bit uh, in the same register. So I would really say you're going to need to do some uh, some sculpting of those. So. One easy way is just to use, I mean, I feel like Three Sisters is a bit of a cheat a lot of the time. Just in that you can kind of instantly give sounds a bit of a, a different sonic kind of space. And one thing here, I, I'd love to be able to give you a specific set of parameters, but the, the thing is it's, it's different with every module because there's, when you're doing this kind of feedback stuff, it's like very, very sensitive to slight variations in the circuits. So you're typically gonna have to kind of explore your own modules to figure out um, exactly what settings gonna work on your particular hardware. And again, like if you're using a different manufacturer's oscillators, they're going to have a very different uh, response. But in general, this cross feedback situation, like this setup, it should definitely be possible on most. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's one thing we can do. I mean, this is without any, any modulation. Even this is nice. So, um, the next patch I want to do is actually a, a feedback within, man within, within a single mangrove. And... Ooh, give me one sec, I have to go check the mail. Yo, that was UPS delivering a gift for my partner. It's her birthday. Um, okay, yeah, we're doing a feedback patch with one mangrove. And the idea here is basically to use the formant output to manipulate either formant or air or barrel. Um, Air is something that is in the manual, and people have done it a lot with just using the square output. But, and you know, you can do kind of cool, um, uh, like timbre modifying stuff with that. So let me show, let me show that one quickly. Um, we'll just get like a regular sound going on. kind of control over um, the frequency content in, in a number of different ways. And it's doing it uh, with, with amplitude modulation. And this kind of interacts interestingly with the foreman and barrel controls. When I say interact, I, I don't really mean that this signal is affecting the other sig the other controls, but rather it's um, it's just uh, interacting in terms of the harmonics and in terms of the the structure uh, of the sound, the timbre. But it's cool because the square output maintains its fundamental frequency regardless of the formant control and the barrel control. So you can be doing this pitch division stuff at the same time as feeding back with an exact um, kind of fundamental tone. And I think if you FM this stuff, um, or rather, like hit it with an envelope. You can get a lot of um, that kind of like really intense bass sounds that are uh, they use a lot in like drum and bass and dubstep and like these kinds of sounds. A re-space, I think, is called. I'm here just using a uh, cold Mac to do um, to add an to add an amplitude control over this uh, this um, modulation application.
Anyway, that's one tiny little thing. Um, let's take that out. Now let's instead use the... We're going to copy the format output. Um, and... Oh, is there no microphone? Oh, you can. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so I'm just checking the chat. Cool. Okay, um, so this is just the mangrove again. We're kind of pitch divided a long way, so let's bring it back. And now we're going to use the formant um, feeding back into uh, the f the format input. This is probably going to need. Let's go through um, through a cold Mac. We're going to dummy cable this to make it a, a proper VCA. Um, just so we have kind of volume, con uh, yeah, volume control. So now we kind of have like a an audio rate um, self feedback situation. So I've got the formant control right on the edge of that pitch division, and then I can use that feedback to kind of step through in a way where we're going to be hearing both the the kind of upper and lower note. Without it, it's it's it has a different characteristic to um, just turning the controls themselves. And it can be a really subtle thing. It can move around a lot. That's one. You can also we can also do barrel. Right? So that's the barrel. We can also use the square because with the uh, the air control, we have this kind of this attenuator here. We can kind of control the amount directly. Um, but even without that, we can just you can just patch like a VCA or a you know even an attenuator um, to get. We'll go this way so it looks logical. I'll just get an amount of the modulation. So all this stuff gets into kind of some weird, chaotic, noisy territory, but I think it can be still really interesting. Um, just as a way to kind of get new timbres out of um, an oscillator. And I think this is true in general. Like you can, 
Like we can do a similar kind of uh, self patch with just friends in oscillator mode. And in, in every oscillator you use, you're going to get a different kind of quality, a different characteristic out of it. Um, yeah, we can show that quickly with just friends. Um, so all I'm going to do is, um, I mean, I can do a self patch directly to FM. That way I get kind of an attenuator on board. Um, and FM's gonna give you those more kind of chaotic, weirder sounds. Um, so this is just using a sine wave, and we're taking the fourth octave up to kind of do that self-feedback. Um, oh, sorry, it's octave four, uh, two octaves down. One cool thing here with Just Friends is because these uh, harmonics are locked together, you know, it's just, this is literally four times as fast as this, um, you can get these kind of like, these wave foldy sounds um, that aren't just FM sounds. You know, when you do, um, when you try and use two oscillators to do FM, it can be really difficult to get them like tuned together. Um, but this way you get these like nice ratios where they can drift a tiny bit, like you can hear it there, um, kind of pulsing. But in general, it's like accurate enough that it's really just going to give you that um, the frequency impact more than anything else. One other really cool patch with this is if we listen to even the 2N output, we can modulate, is this right? Yeah, so what we're doing here is using, we're listening to the second output, um, which is all of these outputs will get modulated by the FM knob going clockwise, but if we turn it counterclockwise, um, the only one that isn't affected is output number one. So that means we can use output one as the feedback source. Um, and so the cool thing about that is it's not, there's actually no feedback there happening in terms of FM. You know, this, it's a self-patch, um, but it's not actually a feedback patch in terms of FM, um, because this green cable is basically not going to affect itself. It's only going to affect the other outputs. Whereas if it does affect itself, it sounds more like this. You get that like super chaotic territory. Whereas instead we can go without it and we get these like nicer or more kind of musical, like normal natural sounds. I talk about uh, FM so uh, being like wave folding a lot and I think it's because they have a lot of the same effects, right? It's, it's about this kind of adding these overtones that you get like, like this. To me, that sweep is very like characteristic of a wave folder without quite as much kind of uh, sonic effect. Again, we could um, we could kind of apply a uh, an envelope to that. So I'll do that by going through this cold Mac. So 
So that's the full range of the control. Um, and then we're going to do it, we can just use the, the kind of all the minimum values output for it to be the signal control. So that's uh, that's kind of a way to use. It. I mean, it's not strictly a feedback patch, but I think it's still really interesting. Um, what's next? Where are we at time-wise? If anybody has like particular modules they really want to, or like ideas they want to know more about, let me know. Part of me really wants to get this three sisters patch working because it sounded so great yesterday. Um, there's a version that uses formant mode, so why don't we try that? Um, let's go to the third three sisters that's in here. Wait, we really should use this one. I was literally using it yesterday and it was working perfectly. So... Part of me thinks we should just leave it all patched up so that we can kind of listen to it all at once at the end, but it's too late. So it says, low to all. And if this doesn't work, we're going to, I think what we should do is kind of explore different self patches within Three Sisters to kind of play with this. Um, because there's a couple that are really interesting. Um, one is, actually one thing we could do first, because I know this one works, <laughs> is taking the center output to modulate span. And this one, maybe it makes sense if you have a really deep understanding or like a deeper understanding of the module. Um, we're going to get it self-oscillating um, in formant mode. And so the first thing I'll try and do is kind of dial in something close to a unison. Um, so when we attach center to span, the cool thing is it's just like with Just Friends, like how when we turned this knob counterclockwise, the first input was unaffected by frequency. Sisters is the same in that the center channel is not affected by span uh, in formant mode. In crossover it does, it is affected. But in formant mode, center is kind of disconnected from the span control. So if we use the center as our modulation, we can get these really interesting FM sounds. Like instant bells. And this is entirely, uh, happy birthday, Taylor. This is entirely dependent upon the setting of span. So right now it's like quite uh, pristine, but you get a lot of different kind of frequency combinations in here. And you can get these like lovely sidebands and stuff coming in in the bass from that FM. And of course you can listen to those channels individually. That's the high and this is the low. Um, or we're just mixing them here. One thing we can do um, is we can run this patch in stereo, which I think is a really lovely thing. Sorry for brushing the mic there. Um, so now there's going to be two volume controls. It's a little awkward, but we'll figure it out. I'm not entirely sure the Twitch stream is in stereo, but hopefully it is. And you'll hear kind of... You get these really interesting combinations. These 
kind of like shimmering sounds. Yeah, if you're wearing headphones, it might give you a it might give you a headache or it might give you an epiphany, I'm not sure which. Um, so that's some stereo. Let's go back to mono just for now, because I don't know if there's anything more exciting there. Um, I, the microphone, I'm so sorry. Okay, so we're back. Um, one other, so, so with the same idea, why don't we try and repatch center? Um, so, before we were doing the low output into the all input. This is instead using the center output into the all input. And I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna go, we're gonna try and reproduce this patch that I had going yesterday. Um, a little bit of negative modulation. Um, where are we at? Span and freak interact. Span has to be negative. Freak, span and quality up. All right, this looks correct. Ooh. There's something there. I'm riding the volume control up here because we're very, it, it's, in, it's turned off really loud and it might explode at any moment. <laughs> Maybe we have to give up. Okay. The uh, the modular gods are, are against me on this patch, it seems. You're subsonic with that FM knob. That is entirely the idea. So the point is we kind of want this to be oscillating so low that like usually the cue wouldn't even let it oscillate that low. Um, but because you have a self patch, it gives it extra feedback. Um, and that feedback is what kind of pushes it. And it's the interaction of the, of the different things that will give you the kind of thumping uh, quality. Um, alas, we didn't get there. Um, what else do we have? Where are we? Where are we? Um, okay, there's another patch. There's always another patch. <laughs> oh, okay, one cool one. Um, and this one again is not strictly uh, feedback, but it's something kind of um, associated. And I guess when I'm talking about feedback, I'm really just talking about analog um, effects, things that are basically only possible in the analog realm. Um, and that might make you laugh in this, with this next one because it's using Just Friends, which is a digital module. Um, but I stand by it. And that is, um, we're going to use Just Friends oscillating. And there's no feedback here because Just Friends is really just, uh, it's just going to be a sound source. Um, or it's going to be a, an audio rate signal source. Um, I have three with series. Yeah, I'm going to do a special a special video on with in I think two weeks. That's two. Um, 
which will kind of hopefully be very exciting for people. It's got there's a lot of new stuff about to come out for that. Um, so let's let's just get this patch going. Um, we can do it with two cables. We can do that to start with. Um, so really simply, we're going to be using one as I mean, this is. My cables are all too short. Ah, <laughs> oh, this will be a good stereo patch, actually. We'll leave that cabled up then. So, we're going to start with just a signal um, here, and if I can find a long enough cable, um, we're going to use a harmonically rated, uh, related signal as an FM source. And we're going to go out of uh, self-oscillating mode and informant mode. Okay, so this is just... Just a sine wave, a couple sine waves. Um, and all we're doing is we have the three sisters kind of dialed in to kind of match that frequency. So we get this. Um, and then we're taking an octave up of that signal and applying FM with that. And so as we add more, we're getting the same effect we had before with that self patch in Just Friends which is to say we're getting frequency modulation that is inherently locked between the input and the FM. And this kind of, this doesn't have to be an FM uh, in the sense of an oscillator modulating another oscillator. You can get a very similar sound by modulating a filter or, or modulating anything really. We could do it with even just a VCA in Cold Mac. Um, So there's that. But I think one thing that's really cool is when we do it with three sisters, if we use the all jack, and we get all three um, filters working at the same time, all kind of spread out a little bit, you can get a really interesting kind of complex um, sweep going on in the frequency control. As you get more resonance, you'll get more... Interestingly, more resonance means more high frequencies. At the moment, we've just been doing the octave up as the FM source, um, but let's try now doing the octave down. So I'm just going to flip intone counterclockwise. And I've turned the frequency up so we get a bit more range. So it's interesting, you get a, you get a different harmonic palette um, with that. But it gets much more interesting when you start adding individual signals for the different channels in Three Sisters. Um, and this is kind of getting into some of the territory we touched on last week with the different um, harmonics. Um, but I think you can kind of just experiment, kind of patching in different ways. Um, but this... So this is, I just grabbed a couple of random extra signals. And so now we have three different channels, all feeding the three different Three Sisters filters. And so this is without resonance. This is the, without uh, the FM control.
So we get, you know, some sounds, they're not super interesting. Um, but as we now apply some FM, and this FM signal is the two out of here, um, we'll get some interesting effects as we turn. So that's like a really interesting, to me, uh, kind of spectral comb filter in a way. If we turn the resonance up almost to the point of oscillation, um, this is where you really hear that high frequency stuff happening. So here we're using everything um, with the subharmonic scales, um, but if we instead turn it the other way, we can get the harmonic series instead. We can use those too. You can still use the crossover mode, it's going to have a different kind of sound. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to put the FM signal as being an odd harmonic. So that should give us more, um, more difference when we add the FM. So this is without. I think format mode is more interesting. And why don't we add, we can add that center self patch into span to see what happens there. And just for the sake of it, because we're all here, let's uh, let's patch the stereo patch again. So there's something. I don't know that it's necessarily the most interesting, but we'll play with that. Use that as a start of point. starting point. How did I just kill this? <laughs> uh, I was hoping that we'd get some interesting kind of uh, pings here. Wow, 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 wow. 
So this patch, in a way, it's using a... Here we go, yeah. So this is just using um, so, uh, I unplugged the FM cable. So all we're doing here is letting the oscillators um, oscillate, um, be pinged essentially. But I'm gonna have I'm gonna set this this quality just below self oscillation, and we should be able to hit it with these signals down here. So this is just like a classic ping patch. Let's then add some FM. It's quite quiet because it's right on the edge of oscillation, but to me this is a really nice like rhythm generator. And what it means we're doing is we're basically using an extra channel in Just Friends to trigger everything. But um, but the different triggers have different effects, you know. So this one, this FM here, it's triggering like different notes, but still creating a note. Um, we could also add, you know, probably by ping, like by hitting another one into the frequency input, this will probably add another note. We'll see. But it's such a strong effect, I want to have it less often, so I'm going to use this, the 6N. Just to kind of complete the circle here, I'm going to use the identity output of Just Friends to self modulate or to modulate all the other channels with that same patch as from before. I love this. I should record. I don't know. I am recording this. Even better. I think it's brilliant. Yeah.
very faintly in the background. We finally found the, uh, well, the patch. It's so quiet. I want to turn it up, but I'm afraid. Something's happening. Ooh. Okay, we have an I we have an idea. I always say we, I mean I, but that's fine. Did I turn this down? Uh, I turned this off. That's it. Okay, it's there. It's really, really quiet. Um, so basically, I'm just using the um, the crease circuit in a cold Mac up here to at least turn the very quiet bass drum into a click. <laughs> Sounds like a puppy sleep barking. That's absolutely true. Uh, that, that compression patch, that was one of Sam's creations. Um, I never actually patched it. Somebody should ask him about it. Um, I want to do the, the mid-side patch too, that's a really cool one. Anyway, this kind of like sums it up. I've just been playing around, really. Um, but to me, it's an enjoyable process. We should do like a, a to cross cross the finish line cold Mac patch. Does anybody believe it's possible? I'm not sure. Um, let's try. See what happens. So I'm gonna use just. Oh, you can't even see that one. I guess we'll use this one down here. Um, If anybody remembers the actual patch, please let me know, because I sure as hell don't. I'm just going to kind of freestyle it. Crease probably affects one of these, and then we go from maybe down here to... I feel like this patch is not... Ooh. I think that's the sound of the uh, the voltage regulator inside. <laughs> um. We 
I don't want a patch under there. This is the crease output. I'm going to admit defeat on this one. I really don't know what's up with it. But, um... I hope... We'll bring this back just for good measure. The... I guess the point of today... And maybe this was a bit of a strange way to go about it, but I really just wanted to kind of touch on the idea that like we have all these instruments and like I'm doing it with modular synth today, but like I have so many instruments in my house that I never, I barely use enough to start with, let alone enough to really get like to the depths of everything they're capable of. Um, and I think a lot of the way to kind of get there is just play, you know, is just to like say, okay, I want to use this one module today. And like, like Just Friends is a classic example, but Three Sisters is just as much. It's like, you've got a lot of outputs and a lot of inputs, you know, all, uh, that's, a, that's a lot of different permutations. And some of them don't make sense. And some of them aren't going to create, you know, the sounds you want. But also, like, a lot of them, it's so hard to even know what's possible. Like, I'm playing today with these modules that I, you know, I designed years ago. But I didn't know it, it was even possible of making some of these sounds. And, like, to me, that's a pretty, that's a, like, interesting thing to reflect on. And I wanted to kind of, I don't know, at least hope to kind of start a conversation about it. Or even start people just thinking about it. That there's, like so much possibility in here that it's like hard to imagine ever understanding it all like cold mac is such it's like the biggest example of that for me where every time i play with it it's like how how is it possible that like i know that i understand it you know because there's just so many things it can do i'm convinced that it can oscillate but and in a way that isn't like it being broken um but I haven't figured it out yet, and I don't know that I ever will, you know. Somebody will, eventually. Um, and that's me being somebody who understands how it works on the deepest level. Um, for just Matt, yeah, what is this patch? It is confusing. Three channels of Just Friends. are going into the three channels of three sisters. Um, the center output is going into the span input. And we're listening to the all out, oh, we're listening to the low and the high outputs separately on left and right, and then adding in um, the all output on the left channel. This cold Mac is hooked up, but not doing anything, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. That's my little, like, idea. I just want to encourage people to, like, play with whatever they have, you know? I can't imagine, like, ever wanting or needing to buy, uh, oh, that, um, I can't imagine myself ever wanting to buy more modular, <laughs> you know? And and that's not to say, like, my stuff will do everything. It's just that, like, I have all these things and, like, there's no way I'm ever going to get to the bottom of it. It's fun to it's fun to dig, though. There's so many ideas. Um, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's, the, that's it for today. I got to get uh, back on my bike and get out of here. But, um... Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Next week... I'm not entirely sure what next week's going to be. Um, there's a few ideas, but... Uh, 
As always, let me know in the lines thread. If you're not on lines, it's eight L's in a row dot co. Check it out. There's a thread just about this stream. Um, but yeah, you know, just let me let me know if there's like particular things you want to explore. I think like these kind of self patches and feedback and audio rate modulation things are really interesting. So that's what drove me to do this today. But really, I'm just doing things that I like. But I would love to do things that are exactly what you're interested in. So let me know. And we'll figure something interesting out for next week. And the week after, hopefully, we'll have a whole bunch of uh, new features and firmware updates and things across the ecosystem um, to discuss and hopefully to demo a whole lot of um, and yeah, I mean, I hope that the, the new things are going to make everything um, more interesting. Ooh, geode. Then I'd actually learn how to use it. Um, yeah, we could definitely do something like that. I think using Just Friends as a modulation source is definitely an interesting topic, and I think part of the reason there isn't that much written about it online is that I myself typically just use Just Friends in Shape Mode as like a an instant music generator, <laughs> like an instant uh, rhythm generator in different ways. Um, I think rhythm is a hard thing to think about. It's it's much more difficult to think about than than harmony. I think drummers often get the wrong end of the stick. Sorry for that awful pun. Um, but yeah, we could totally do it like a a rhythm a rhythm stream. How about that? We can talk about geode. We can talk about just friends. Um, I can maybe try and articulate these rhythm things a little bit more with the mangroves and stuff. But we can also do some rhythm rhythm generation stuff with Crow, so we can do some scripting as well. Um, okay, cool. Well, thanks everybody. Um, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to post this one online, but um, thanks everybody for tuning in. And hopefully I'll see you all next week and we can do something probably a little bit more structured. Um, but yeah, everybody, thank you so much.